Uh, okay. It's time. We have a couple of people who were unable to make it this evening for the Brian Schmetzer This Is Your Life show. So we'll have a couple more live guests in just a moment, but we have two video clips. Our first clip comes from another longtime peer. He was an indoor teammate of Brian's in San Diego and St. Louis. He later brought him into the coaching profession. Together they helped the Seattle Sea Dogs win a league championship in 1997. Here now, from Dallas, technical director for FC Dallas, Fernando Clavijo. They're looking for a short story about Brian Schmetzer. It's no such a thing. Um, Brian and I will go back for a long time, so the stories could be a really long ones. And uh, I'm just gonna abbreviate a little bit what's going on and what, what did this happen when we were playing, we were teammates in San Diego soccer. Every day, Brian would pick me up in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning, we go to McDonald's, we got a cheese danish and coffee. We go to practice. Uh, and then we go, we drive back home, our kids play together all the time. And then until today, he's still complaining because he say in a soccer tennis game, I broke his nose. <laughs> that I kick my, I took my foot way too high and kick him in the nose. And I always say back to him, no, you put your head all the way down and you hit me in, in my foot. <laughs> until today, after 20 plus years, we had never really figured out what happened. Uh, I'm gonna put that to rest today. Brian, I did put my foot too high and I kicked you in the nose and I broke your nose. I am sorry. <laughs> I uh, hope you're doing well. I'm really excited for the achievement you have last year. Be prepared for what's gonna happen to you this year. So um, always, it's always a pleasure, Brian. Uh, for you and your kids, congratulations. Very good. A couple thoughts about Fernando. Fernando. You may, maybe I have to turn the mics off. They got it. Okay. So just use, use your big melodious okay. voice. Okay, so Fernando was a great guy. He was a very talented player, but a really good friend to me. And we had a lot of good times together, coupled by that story about when he really did break his nose. And I'm happy that he actually admitted that, because the ball's like here like this. And I'm going like this. The, the, his foot was way high and he, he actually broke my nose. The, the wonderful story about that though, San Diego was a good time in my life. Uh, my daughter Danny was born there and we had some good times and we were successful. And what I learned from Fernando and some of the guys on the soccers and then when Fernando was a coach of the Sea Dogs, I learned different ways how to win. Mm -hmm. And Fernando, you could say, okay, maybe he didn't have a ton of success when he was in Colorado and he had some places, but he knew how to manage people. And so I learned a little bit from him when he took on Gene Harbor one day, this massive guy like this, and Fernando's up there with his Uruguay, you believe in like this? And I'm like going, yeah, you, sometimes you got to stick up for what you believe in is right. Sure. And that was Fernando. He, he always stuck up for what he felt was right. He also gave one of the most famous radio interviews in KJR history after the Sea Dogs won the CISL title and he dropped not one but two F-bombs in like 17 seconds. And it, it's one of our prized possessions down at KJR. Our second clip is uh, from the original Mr. Sounder. Uh, he was a Sounders captain. He was a head coach back in the day. In 2003, he worked with you on the Sounders staff. Uh, here in an excerpt from an interview during the MLS Cup run last fall, here is the great Jimmy Gabriel. He's just a fantastic coach. You know, when he was younger, he was the same. Mm -hmm. Knew what he was doing, knew what he was talking about, and, and got uh, the, 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 the team's playing. Every team that I've seen him become the, the, the coach of has won things. You know, that's what he does. Uh, he gets, somehow, he gets some sort of magic onto the team, you know, by talking to him or, or working with him and all that sort of thing. 
and uh, it's, it's fantastic what you can see. And uh, that's what he's doing right now. You know, he's got the team playing really well. Uh, and they're all happy and smiling and, you know, they're not doing it because they're going, uh, you know, because they're playing, they love it. And it, he's getting them doing that. But he has a very good brain about what he should be doing with the players. He really was, you know, and, uh, and he is now. You know, that, that team has come from being an up and down team to just a fantastic team. So there you go, halfway through the season and all of a sudden, zoom, away they go, can't get beat. Yeah. So he's, he's a, yeah, top class coach. And um, same thing, maybe a thought or two on Jimmy and the guy you've known for a long, long time. That's a tough one. <laughs> so he taught me a lot. Uh, I... So Jimmy... God bless him, taught me a lot. So one of the things he taught me was humility. So I have so many stories of Jimmy that are good stories, and I wish he was here. Uh, I remember using him as an example. So he was a 1966 FA Cup winner, and when he was my assistant, he would pick up cones. And I told the young players, I said, why is that guy picking up cones? Why is he, why is Jimmy, why is a guy who won the 1966 World Cup, uh, FA Cup, why is, he, why is he picking up cones? You freaking guys go over there and pick those goddamn cones up. And so he doesn't have to do it. But he did it, you know why? because he would do anything to help the team be successful. That's what he did. Man management, top class. Jimmy Gabriel, all for the team. Two great qualities, two great coaches. I'm sorry for that. He's a good man. You're, you're a sum of a lot of great people. Yeah. Our next guest, I, I guess I should go backstage again. Our next guest is, is ready to go. Come on out. Folks, welcome Tom Dutra here to the party. Thank God you're here. Dude, where were you like 30 seconds ago? Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, first of all, class. Uh, you know, I think when Frank called me and I think you guys, he says, yeah, I want to hear some good locker room stories and just some things over the years. And there's been a lot and there's been so many, but the ones that come to mind for me in the locker room, to be honest with you, is, well, there's, there's a few that I'll, I'll leave out, but I'm going to bring family into it. And because Brian is such an awesome family man, his son Keenan's there, I've spent a lot of time with his family, Christine, who I love. Um... One of my favorite moments ever was I was so proud to be able to coach for the Sounders back in the USL days. And it was one of my first moments to bring my son in. He was not even two years old at the, mo at the time. And I brought him in to the locker room. And I was just so happy to bring him in there. I don't know why. I mean, I, it, I love the club. And so I brought him in, and Brian was just, we won the game. But he was having a right go about the team the way we played. And there was two little lockers in his coach's office. They were right behind. Because Tant, my son was so small, he was able to hide behind our coach's gear, and he couldn't see him. So myself and Jimmy, who's ultimate class, Darren Swaski was there, Brian. Brian's just like, I don't know what's wrong with the team. I'm like, I'm excited we won. 
And he starts going off about the team and everything else. And my son, who wasn't quite two, were teaching him words not to say. And as soon as Brian said, those stupid Tanner, my son comes out and says, Coach, you can't say stupid. <laughs> can't say stupid. <laughs> and so that, that was one of my favorite. I'll bring another one up as well, was we were warming up. And he got this from you, Al, I know. He got this from you. I came in with the goalkeepers. And I got done warming them up. And his Danny was in there reading her book. And we come into Brian's coach's locker room, and, uh, you know, he's, and I, he's really upset the team wasn't right for that day. And he's like, I don't know what's wrong with him. You know, Noah Merle, he's not doing this, whatever, this and that. He comes in, and we're really attentive. His assistant coaches want to make sure we didn't want to upset him. And as soon as he slams the door, his daughter goes, oh, something's a little upset today. And I swear to God, I went in the back shower, and I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> So, you know, Brian is for the players. And honestly, when we won it last year, I looked at him the same way we won in the USL days because we were so happy for those players who were on the field. And it is about the players and it's about the fans. And to see him walk with the fans, because I'm a fan of the team as well. I was a ball boy back in the day. And I loved every minute of what you guys were able to experience because what we were able to experience and what the players were able to experience was unbelievable. And, what a great place to do it in. So, and I'm glad a lot of people have brought in family into it because, you know, that's the one of the things I like the most about Brian. I don't like the parts when he comes up to me, he says, I don't give a shit what you do with the goalkeepers, keep the goddamn ball of the net. <laughs> that part I can do without, but that's part of the job. <laughs> so. Coach. The best goalkeeper trainer in America by far. How about that? Everybody's seen a save. Everybody has seen Steph save, right? The best. Why does Steph make that save? Why does he make the save? If he doesn't keep the goddamn ball out of the net, you ain't going to have a goddamn job. And, yeah, I would have bitched at you. That easy. I would have bitched at you, dude. You carry a crossbow around, your goaltender coach listens to you. Uh, we've had, this has been amazing tonight. Uh, great speakers. Alan, thank you. Uh, Chance and Jim, your brothers. But, you know, just in case it hadn't gone well, you, know, you save your heavy hitter for the last guy. Just in case the whole night's been a disaster, which it hasn't been. But just in case it had, we saved the heavy hitter. Our final guest may, know, uh, guest may know Brian as well as anybody. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Come on out, Mr. Sounder. Here he is, Zach Scott. Here we go. Here we go. I got just as much on you. I know, you're absolutely right. Um, I've, I've been blessed with the distinction of been thrown out of at least seven practices. I was trying to, I was trying to remember all seven today. Um, but also getting to have you is a coach for 15 years. And uh, I can honestly say it, it's, it's an experience that hasn't been stale. I think the same way I've tried to improve every single year, Brian has, has been right there along with me, always trying to improve as a coach. Um, and it's been quite a journey. Um, my, <laughs> my first year, it was a, uh, I'm glad Adrian stepped out now because it was a per game uh, contract, $250 a game played. Uh, so if you didn't play, you didn't get paid. Uh, and fortunately, Brian knew that and would throw me in at, at minute 89. <laughs> so, I'd, so I'd get that $250 and uh, make my wife happy. So let's just, let's just, Let's go back and forth. Okay, that's Every perfect. story that he has, I'm going to tell you where I learned that from. So Alan Hinton, I had a bonus in my contract, and me and Neil Megson were roommates. So we'd always plan. Neil would, like, come up with an injury, and he would, like, <laughs> oh, Al, my hamstring's sore. And Al would look down the bench and, Smets, get up here. So I'd make 500 bucks a month because... <laughs> It all comes back around somehow. <laughs> Dangerous Dave Matson in the house. I used to 
get that guy on the field. I mean, you were getting paid some big money at the Sea Dogs. I know that too. It's good. That's uh, but that's that's Brian's personality, and um, often growing up, especially in Hawaii, especially in a small town, um, and not with my dad there along the way. I was at my my coaches were they were mentors, but they were father figures, and. Um, getting to see the way Schmetz interacted with me, he interacted with other players, the fact that he was wholly invested in making you not only a better soccer player, but a better person. Um, that always resonated with me. I mean, he was one of the first guys that was out there at training, making sure these young guys were working on whatever it took to get them, to get them better, to get them prepared, uh, wholly investing in them as players. and and. He was also the guy that, when we were making $250 a game, he was driving you to a, a construction site, and he had a job there for you as well. Uh, num a number of stories about that. Um, but as, as it's been reiterated several times, I mean, I'm a massive family man. To, to be able to play for a coach that it has invested in his family and his community the way that he has, and, and being a part of this and seeing all the people that have turned, turned out to celebrate Schmetz is, be is a lot an more absolute tomorrow. joy for me. There'll be a lot more tomorrow for you. It's, it's not an in memoriam, FYI. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, thank you guys. Appreciate this guy. Hang on a second. Don't go anywhere. Sorry, Mike. So. Some of you guys, it's Andy's in the room. Some of you may have heard this story, I apologize, but Zach talked about dedication, about getting better, and me helping players get better, right? There's a trick to trying to get people to develop to their fullest potential. I think Zach had figured it out on his own. I had nothing to do with it. But since Andy's in the room, tell us a story about when you went to Cleveland. I sent him away, I sent him away to my brother who was coaching him for the Cleveland Crunch indoors because Zach, when he first started, his technical ability wasn't great. So I thought indoor soccer might be good for him. It, uh, it, was, a, it was a low point in, not in my career, <laughs> but in my life. I, I've tried to block that out and I'm glad you just kind of, you stirred that up again. Uh, it was... Number one, never playing indoor in my entire life um, was quite interesting, and it was cold. Um, but granted, I, I came away from there with a complete dedication to getting better at the game. So hopefully you noticed that. I did. <laughs> I did. I did. Okay, good, because Andy definitely got the worst of it, well, I'll tell you that right now. Being, look, he ended up being the one of – look – Everybody can see a bad pass every now and again, but Zach's ability to understand the right pass and making the pass that goes forward instead of backwards or sideways has always been one of the things that he's been underappreciated for. And he learned that through his own dedication to his craft to being a good pro. And that's why he is, along with Al and some of the rest of us in the room, such a good guy because he values what he is and what he does. So thank you for that, for 15 Appreciate years that. of that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, it's been, it's been quite a ride and, and to obviously, for me to end with a championship, but to see this guy take over a team that was truly, um, you know, it, it make or break. I mean, he basically told us it's on you guys. You can either go down in history as the worst team uh, that the Sounders have had, or you can go down as one of the best. And credit, credit to just him. Like that. I mean, he, I mean no, hey, I, I know him, and that's what he actually kind of. said. <laughs> <laughs> but he did, he did lead us, lead us to that point where we were fully invested in in changing, changing our fate, basically. So credit to you, Schmetz. Thanks, Zach. Good. Zach Scott, everybody. Nice work. I, I like that story. I went to Cleveland and I, I dedicated myself to working hard and getting better so I'd never get sent to Cleveland again. <laughs> Coach, how'd the evening work out for you? Pretty fun time? Yeah, it was good. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Brian Schmetzer, this is your life. 
Thank you to the Market Arms, and thanks to everybody for being here. And thanks to the Washington Legends of Soccer for their great support of this game.